Hey, it's Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com. If you have an existing system that's hard to change because it feels like a rat's nest, or you're building a new system and you don't want it to become a turd pile, then follow along. So the first thing I gotta talk about is dry. Don't repeat yourself. Now on the internet, there's a wide variety of opinions on this from the general side of you should apply this principle to the other side of it's the worst idea ever and should be abolished in a tire fire. It actually kind of sits in between, which is you just really understand what you're trying to accomplish with it. The key thing I wanna point out here is when dry is uh, principle is applied successfully, a modification to any single element of the system does not require a change to any logically unrelated elements. Let's jump into some code for an example. But I gotta stress, you gotta be thinking about your code base in your context, because my examples are very trivial, but you need to be thinking about your system. Now my guess is the majority of people would describe dry in this way. We have two methods here. The first one is ship distance, where it's taking internal sh external shipment that has a collection of stops, we're just summing those up, but let's say that, that uh, actually those distances are in miles and our system uses kilometers. So we're actually gonna return the miles uh, converted to kilometers. Then we have another method here called toll distance, which is doing something very, very similar to get out the number of miles that roads that have tolls. And we're doing this exact same conversion from miles to kilometers. Before I jump back to the example, I'd like to thank Event Store for sponsoring this video. Event Store DB is a new category of operational database built for event sourcing, CQRS, and event driven microservices. For more on Event Store DB, check out the link in the description. So you might be thinking, with well, don't repeat yourself, maybe because those methods were very similar, we can kind of merge them to one, add some type of parameter, whether we figure out we got to do that where clause with the tolls. That actually would probably be pretty gross. Or you think, okay, don't repeat yourself. It was just that conversion from miles to kilometers. And that's exactly what you'd think. Just a private method here, miles to the kilometers, doing that conversion, and then we can subsequently call it in both methods. But the reality in a big system, I'm likely needing to do this conversion anywhere that I'm getting external data that's in miles to have to convert it to kilometers, which is the what I'm using in the base of my system. So maybe we ended up at defining some record that's kilometers, some type of utility where we can take this and do the conversion to kilometers, so we don't just have it maybe in one method, but we can use it kind of everywhere throughout our system. So you may be thinking, okay, what does this have to do with having a rat's nest system that's hard to change, some big turd pile? Everything. In a large system, if we were using this extension method everywhere within our system to do the conversion from miles to kilometers, we may have a problem if we ever need to change this or somebody decides that they need to change it. So it could be as simple as just changing the midpoint uh, rounding or just changing the number of decimal, place, decimal places for our rounding. Sure, we could have tests that are still looking at our kilometers in, out, that it's making sense, but are you testing that you're still getting two decimal places based on that implementation? Are clients expecting to? What happens if we change it to zero? The client code, never mind tests, you may not get full coverage over what your actual clients are expecting from this. So the point of my trivial example is to illustrate that the degree to which you're coupled matters a lot. And dry, don't repeat yourself, can have an impact on how highly you're coupled. What I also think gets people in trouble building those rat's net turd pile systems is exclusively focusing on entities or nouns built around the system. So an example here, I have a truck, a driver, an order, a shipment. You can imagine this is transportation, but what specifically, if I'm thinking about what is actually have to happen, what is it? Nothing related to this. What really has to happen in my system are various activities that people need to perform. The capabilities of unhook a trailer, seat a driver in a truck, dispatch an order, arrive at a stop for a shipment. There's all kinds of different actions. That's actually what's happening. Of course, you're gonna have entities and data, but the real driver, no pun intended with the slide, is what the actual activities, the capabilities that you're providing in your system. My example here, say that one of them was seat driver. Yes, that involves a driver in a vehicle. You have other things like unhook trailer, which involve a trailer and a vehicle. You're hooking a, a trailer to a vehicle. You're dispatching an order. Well, that involves a lot of things. There's a driver involved, a vehicle, a trailer, the order, the shipment that you're creating. And with dry, that means not repeating those business capabilities. That does not mean not repeating entities. Because if you apply dry to entities, that's how you can end up with this rat's nest. If you think of these bubbles as entities and having relationships and dependencies of other d entities, or if you're thinking about those overall bigger uh, business processes or capabilities, and they're referencing all these different entities, that's how you end up in a rat's nest. When you go back to think about coupling, and if you wanna change something, what's everything that you're affecting? A singular entity in your system 
does not need to be a representation of multiple concepts. Remember, don't repeat concepts. When unhooking a trailer, sure, we could have a trailer and vehicle entities behind that actual capability of unhooking a trailer, but that trailer and vehicle, those concepts, are very different concepts from when you're dispatching an order. It's not the same vehicle and trailer that you're dispatching. The completely different concerns of when you're dispatching versus when you're unhooking a trailer. When we're dispatching, we're just identifying potentially say maybe what vehicle, its current location, what trailer is currently hooked to that vehicle when we dispatch that order versus when we're unhooking the trailer, we have various concerns about where are we unhooking it at? When are we unhooking it? What vehicle it is? What's the current location? They're similar names. They're named the same entities, but they're different concepts. Don't repeat business concepts whether that be entities that relate to workflows or business processes or capabilities that the user is trying to perform, don't repeat those. And if you've heard of vertical slice architecture and you thought it was purely about code organization, maybe you realize now that it's not. It's about increasing cohesion around capabilities to reduce coupling. And to be fair, vertical slice architecture is just a name that's kind of kicked off recently for something that's been around a long time, which is really just defining boundaries. How you do that's changed over time, but really just based on capabilities. It's not that everything needs to be uniform like this, where you have to have a domain model. I always say it just gives you the options because you're defining that boundary or those boundaries to define what you want to do where. Maybe you just have your application layer and a data model. It's just that simple. Maybe some other place you have a lot of complexity. You want to kind of manage that with uh, a domain model. So be it. It just allows you to define boundaries and define what you want to do within those boundaries. It's just about reducing coupling, increasing cohesion, and one way of doing that is don't repeat yourself. Don't repeat concepts within a boundary. So regardless of code or concepts, the idea of don't repeat yourself is neither bad or good. It's just understanding how you're applying it. If you're applying it heavily, you potentially have more coupling. If you have more coupling, it's gonna be harder to make changes. I've been getting a ton of great comments on my videos recently. People posting their context, pain points, solutions to various topics. So get in there, let me know what you think about Dry. If you wanna go farther than that, and you wanna interact with other software developers, both software architecture design, topics like this, event-driven architecture, domain-driven design, CQRS, event sourcing, and more, you can join my channel and get access to a private Discord server. The link's in the description on how to join. If you have any other thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment, give it a, a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.